So I've said it before, and I will say it again, guys. Guys in Chicago, they bang on neutrons, okay? And when some incident happens where, you know, a neutron is killed and, you know, the guy gets arrested, you know, I always see in the comments, like, everybody's calling him a goofy. And not just in the comments, like, just all over social media, man. Like, other gang members calling him goofies. It's not him, okay? It's the lifestyle because this literally is what you sign up to do when you gangbang, man. Because you gotta, like, just assume that somebody's an op based off of really just... It could be anything, you know, where he's at, what he looks like, all this type of stuff. The whole the whole gang lifestyle involves stereotyping other dudes to try and guess if they're ops. You know what I'm saying? And they get it wrong all the time, and they merc neutrons all the time, man. It's not them, okay? It's the entire lifestyle, okay? This is what you sign up to do. You sign up to bang on neutrons because it's inevitable, okay? When you got to spot these ops all over the city and, you know what I'm saying, you don't know where they're from, you can't pull the face card or whatever... It's inevitable that sometimes guys are going to, you know, hit the wrong guy. And we have another incident of that. And that woman that I was telling you guys about a few videos back, this is actually the beginning of a conclusion to that case, who was killed over by Kedzie in North Avenue on the same day that the couple was dragged out of their car and killed, um, you know, by the Puerto Rican Day Parade. So she apparently was killed in a gang-related incident. Okay, again, she obviously is a neutron. But the dudes that the person... The shooter was actually, like, confronting at the scene were, weren't even from Chicago, man. So check this out. A guy named Angel. Uh, he's 22 years old. So what happened was that over by that uh, Humboldt Park neighborhood where the Puerto Rican festivities were going on, a carload of residents from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, not even from Chicago, who had come to Chicago to enjoy Puerto Rican Day festivities, uh, that car was riding over by Kedzie and North Avenue. All right, and several people walked around their car last Saturday evening. So this guy, Angel, he was wearing a purple sweatshirt, white pants. He threw up Latin King hand gestures, and he demanded to know where the carload of people was from. Now, this is a situation that I've been talking about a lot over the past few weeks. When a gang member asks where you're from, what do you say? Okay, so we have another situation just like that right here. So at that point, after he had asked that question, somebody... And we're not exactly sure at this point who it was, pulled a gun and began shooting uh, in the direction of the, uh, of the visitor's car, okay? Now, a 23-year-old male passenger was hit in the thigh, but another bullet flew across the street and accidentally struck Nicole, the lady that I just posted the, uh, the other video about. She was 37 years old. It, it hit her in the back as she was walking with her husband. She instantly fell to the ground. And uh, her husband, you know, he was obviously, like, standing right next to her when this happened. She wasn't responding. He started to panic. So he said, I asked her uh, to say anything. He said, I cupped her cheek with my only free hand and looked her in the eyes. That's when I lost it. Her eyes had lost focus and she wasn't moving. He was saying, baby, say anything. Just speak to me. Stay with me. I love you. He said, I saw her mouth moving, but nothing was coming out. So his wife died. The other victim survived, but uh, he still has the bullet stuck in his leg. So the shooting was captured on video. And uh, Angel is clearly visible on the footage. So detectives recognized Angel in the footage and tried to arrest him on Monday. But he allegedly sped away from them. They caught up with him on Thursday as he allegedly tried to crawl out of a window in his house. So he uh, admitted to shooting the gun. But he said the people in the car shot at him first. So that's the part that I was talking about. Like I'm not quite exactly... It's not exactly clear the uh, exact uh, sequence of events at that point. But uh, the video footage though does not support his claim according to the prosecutor now we don't know if that's actually true uh that's what the prosecutor is saying but i will say this guys prosecutors say stuff that's not true sometimes so uh you know i would have to see the video footage myself which i haven't been able to see at this point uh, i'm not accusing the prosecutor of lying but i have to see the footage myself first so he said the the, the video footage does not show the people in the car shooting at him first okay so he's now charged with first degree murder and four counts of attempted first-degree murder. So a public defender said that he uh, he has a job at the airport um, and the uh, judge ordered him held without bail. So uh, whether or not, listen, whether or not he was a king or whether or not he was false flagging as a king, you know, we can't tell. But just another scenario like I've brought up in a million other videos, you know, there's neighborhoods that will try and identify a guy by the face. Okay, and then there's neighborhoods where it's just like a city-wide thing, you know what I'm saying? And we meet a, a dude who's from this gang anywhere in the city, we're 
blowing at him. You know what I'm saying? And you, like, you can see guys, like, uploading this type of stuff to social media. They'll, like, pull up on somebody, hey, what you is, where are you from, you know what I'm saying? And these are obviously, like, dudes that, I mean, they, they're, they're not recognizing their face, right? They're asking him where he's from. They've never seen this guy before in their life. And, you know, then if they like the answer or they don't like the answer, they'll just blow at him. This is how so many neutrons get killed, bro. There was an incident about, like, five, six years ago. I remember this is when I was working at Kelvin Park. I heard about it, man. There was a king who went up to another king. And he asked him, like, where he was from. And the king said, like, he was a king or something like that. And the other king said, you ain't no king. And he pulled out a gun and shot him, and he was a king. A king killed another king because he just, like, didn't believe the answer. This is the kind of stuff that gangbangers sign up to do, bro. Nobody can tell me. This is to all the shorties listening to this video right now. Okay, if you're, like, 13, 14, you're starting to hang out with the guys or whatever, this lifestyle, bro, is pure 100% unadulterated goofiness. There's nothing non-goofy about this. Look at what goes on, bro. Look at this. This is, there's nothing, not even 1% of this lifestyle that's not totally goofy. So rest in peace to Nicole and all the other neutrons that get shot in Chicago all the time. And uh, too, just as a side note, um, you can see from this guy's hairstyle, I mean, this guy is most likely Puerto Rican. He could be some, he could be Dominican or something else, but I'm guessing Puerto Rican based on the area, you know, Humboldt Park, that's where all the Puerto Ricans are from. You can see from his hairstyle, from a distance, you know, like from a distance, you might mistake him for a light-skinned black guy, right? That, this is what I was saying, like, in that other video about the couple being dragged out of their car. Uh, you don't want to jump to conclusions, like, about the guy's race. I saw some people, you know, assuming that it was a uh, African-American guy that had dragged, you know, that had shot uh, Giovanni, okay, the other day at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. And uh, that's kind of like, it's unwise to jump to that conclusion because, like I said, with Puerto Ricans, um, you know, they can be genetically part black. I mean, obviously, culturally, there's a difference. And, you know, ethnically, that's a different group. But, uh, you know, you don't want to set something off, you know what I'm saying, prematurely. Because the streets retaliate immediately, you know, and they shouldn't. I mean, hopefully that with the Puerto Ricans, I haven't seen that much stuff in recent years. You know what I'm saying? Like with, with uh, the black community, really any problems with that. They mostly get along, especially people that aren't in the streets. And a lot of them, they have, you know, they have friends, you know, they intermarry, stuff like that. Uh, but you can see, like, this guy could potentially, from a distance, be mistaken because of his hair for a light-skinned black dude. So you don't want to, you don't want to make those assumptions. And touching on something that I was saying in the other video about the drugs that a lot of these guys are off of, you know, causing them to do a lot of irrational stuff. Uh, a lot of guys will say, too, that just, uh, you know, riding on somebody or, like, you know, confronting somebody like this, shopping for ops, whatever in and of itself is kind of like a drug, you know what I'm saying, like, just doing that is kind of like an adrenaline rush, you know, riding with the stick on them, looking for ops and stuff, like, it's just like a rush, it's like a, a power trip, you know, and uh, that gets the dude's heads, you know, makes them feel like the man, and, you know, just getting off at somebody, like, they, they literally ride around thirsty to just get off at anybody, like, they want to use that pole, you know? that at least on some level makes sense as like a, a you know, a psychological high, but you got to re remember that like any other drug, okay, with that high, there's a crash and there's a come down, you know what I'm saying? And that come down always comes and it's horrible, you know what I'm saying? And then the withdrawal is horrible. And literally there's actually a phys physical component to this because, you know, those endorphins, that adrenaline that, you know, these kinds of experiences cause to be released in the body, you know, the body gets used to that, uh, those levels of th those hormone levels being adjusted. And then, you know, when the activity stops, it's like you're craving it again. And, you know, dudes go around, like, that get used to doing this stuff. They get thirsty to slide on somebody. Like, literally, physically feeling withdrawal unless they go and do this and get this adrenaline rush again. When dudes say that, you know, it's just about money, I'm doing this to survive, bullcrap. I mean, there's some times when it's like that, but majority of times in Chicago, it's not that. So, for all the kids, you know, think about this beforehand. Because once you get into it, you know, it's very hard to get out, man. It's like trying to get out of quicksand once you get involved in that lifestyle. And I mean physically, for one's own, you know, from one's own perspective, too. Not just as far as, like, being involved with other people, but, you know, getting addicted to that lifestyle. You want to get out of, you want to make the decision beforehand. I'm talking to, the, like, the 12-year-olds, the 13-year-olds, that age. Sit in that jail cell, bro, in that prison cell, like, just staring at the wall all day for years, years and years and years on end. But you're going to be crashing so hard, I mean, you don't want to be in that situation. Think about it now. The, the craving for those kinds of feelings are animalistic, okay? They're like base urges. 
And we're not meant to be that. Me personally, I mean, people can disagree with this. Everybody got their own beliefs. I believe people are, are spiritual beings, you know, like a soul. And that's what we are. You know, we have a body and all that kind of thing, but a soul is what we are. And a soul is never really satisfied, you know, by those, uh, by these kinds of animalistic um, drives and pursuits. A soul is, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's not satisfied by those things. It still leaves one feeling empty and dead on the inside, okay? And when all that is over, you know what I'm saying, when... Uh, when all when that lifestyle and you know the party stops so to speak there's nothing but that emptiness left a lot of guys who do violence intervention work in chicago uh who do gang outreach work guys who you know try to provide jobs to gang members uh, a lot of the pastors who you know go around and try to mediate gang conflicts get guys to sit down and you know talk their differences out you know organize basketball games and stuff like that to try to bring peace to the neighborhoods a lot of these guys are former street guys, you know what I'm saying? Some of these guys were really deep in the streets, you know, and I've heard, you know, guys sometimes say that, well, they're not trying to hear, you know, about uh, all this positive, you know, lifestyle changes and stuff like that from guys who used to, from guys that got bodies, you know what I'm saying? From guys who used to kill people and sell dope and all that kind of thing. But you got to understand, a lot of these guys, you know, who do this kind of work, they change from that lifestyle you know, the gang stuff was not doing it for them. You know, they become pastors, you know, they change their life around totally, go back to the hood, you know what I'm saying, try to do this stuff um, to to change guys who are doing the stuff that they used to be doing because they can't just sit there and, you know, watch guys make the same mistakes that they made, going through the same things that they went through. And, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys are like Christian guys. They're, you know, they work for churches in their community and they say, well, they will say themselves, you know, when they give speeches to these young guys that they found something that was doing for them. It was satisfying them on a level that, you know, the gang life could not satisfy them on. So they want to give that to somebody else. So, you know, for people that complain about like, you know, they're always trying to tell me stuff. And these guys got, you know, these guys killed like three people, five people, whatever. So, you know, I'm not trying to hear that from them. You got to you got to realize, like, if they, you know, found a way out of that. You know what I'm saying? And if they found something better than that, then why wouldn't they want to share that with somebody else? You know what I'm saying? That's, I mean, that's what they say. You know, I'm I'm just repeating their words. You know, you can take it from them. But there's a lot of guys like this in the neighborhoods, and I advise gang members, you know, to listen to these guys because they've already been there. You know what I'm saying? They've already done this stuff. Like, I'm not going to get up there and try to say that, you know, I've done 20 drive-bys and all this kind of stuff because I haven't done that. There's plenty of guys out there that can tell you everything, you know what I'm saying, that they've been through and, uh, will give you an opportunity to skip a lot of the trials and tribulations that they had to go through, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Some people got to experience it for themselves. You know, they can't just hear it from somebody else. They can't take advice. But, uh, I mean, it would save them a lot of trouble in the end. Your boy, when you see the report, I'm out.